Imagine you're sitting in your bedroom in 1956 doing your homework and you need to calculate sine of one. Well, that's easy. I'll just take out my calculator. <laughs> So what do you do? Well, if you're like most people, you'll choose option C. Or if your name's Shane Dawson, you might go with option B. But if your name's Jack Volder, you might go with option E. Create your own approximation. This algorithm is the Cordic algorithm. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to code your own Cordic algorithm in Python. Sine theta is just the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine one is just the opposite over the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle with an angle of one radius. And to make things even simpler, if I set the hypotenuse to a length of one, then sine of one is just the length of the opposite side. Now here's where the fun begins. Imagine you plot this triangle on a graph, then sine of 1 is just the y coordinate of this point here. So if we start with a length of 1, and then we rotate this length halfway, and then halfway again, and then halfway the other way, and then halfway this way, and then we keep getting closer, eventually the y coordinate of the end of this point will approach sine theta. In order to perform the rotation, we're going to use the rotation matrix. But wait. That requires sine and cosine. Ah! Shh, calm down now. We're going to factor out the cosine alpha, which leaves us with this. So when we front multiply this by our x and y coordinate, we get the image of x and the image of y. Now I'm going to ignore this cosine for now, but don't worry, I'll come back to it later. So when we multiply this out, we get the image of x equals x minus y tan alpha, and the image of y equals y plus x tan alpha. We're not always going to be rotating in the same direction. Sometimes the algorithm will need to go the other way, depending on which way goes closer. So it'll have to be either plus or minus alpha. So I'm going to incorporate a decision variable in here called D that's going to decide whether we go forwards or backwards. But since tan of minus alpha is the same as minus tan alpha, we can move this decision variable to the start of each term. In the beginning, we said that alpha was going to start at pi over 4, and then it was going to half to pi over 8 and then pi over 16, and then pi over 32, and so on. But it actually doesn't matter what we choose alpha to be, as long as alpha gets smaller, and it is enough to traverse the entire 90 degrees. So instead of choosing alpha to be pi over 2 to the n plus 1, we're going to let alpha equal the arctan of 2 to the minus n. And this both gets smaller and also gives us enough uh, angle to traverse the entire 90 degrees. And the reason I've gone with arctan 2 to the minus n is because when we substitute this in for alpha, the inverse tan function cancels with the tan function. So we end up with the image of x equals x minus dy 2 to the minus n, and the image of y equals y plus dx 2 to the minus n. This way we get rid of all the trig functions, so we don't need to guess or approximate anything. But there's still one problem. This variable d, it decides whether we move backwards or forwards, but how do we actually calculate it? If we look at our graph from before, we have a difference between our graph that we have and the graph that we want to get to, and I'll call this difference phi. Now you can see that if phi is negative, sorry, if phi is positive, then we want d to equal one. We want the graph to move up, and if phi is negative, then we want d to equal minus one. So d is basically just the sine of phi. And to find the next phi, we just need to take the current phi and add alpha if we're moving up and take off alpha if we're moving down. This is the opposite way around to the way that d works. So we can say that phi next is equal to phi current uh, minus d alpha. Or phi next equals phi current minus d arctan alpha. So these are our four equations and each iteration of these equations brings the y value closer to sine theta and as a bonus it also brings the x value closer to cosine theta. But remember that cosine alpha we just left out of our matrix multiplication? Well we just applied our cosine alpha to our x and y values multiple times and when we do this again and again and again this cosine alpha multiplies again and again and again. Given that this alpha value is constantly changing we have to find the product of our cosine values from n equals zero to infinity. And that's gonna equal cosine of inverse tan of one multiplied by cosine of inverse tan of a half multiplied by cosine of inverse tan of a, a quarter and so on and so forth. And if you type that into Wolfram Alpha, you get a value of 0 0.607 blah, blah, blah. So if we call this value K, 
then we can replace this with k and by rearranging we can find that our outcome will be 1 over k lots of x n y n so to correct this we have to multiply everything by k that way it'll cancel out the 1 over k so instead of starting with 1 0 like we were going to we should start with k 0 as our initial x and y values so we finally have our recurrence relations and the initial values that we need to begin so let's go into python and code one up ourselves all you need to do to start coding in python is type in online python ide there's a link in the description and then click on the first one on the top and here is your Python IDE. Our first step is to define a function. You type DEF into the uh, IDE and then you put trig. So trig is going to be the name of our function. And then you can stick a theta in there. If you're wondering how I got the theta symbol, just look up online, type in theta. Uh, you might get this theta network thing. You just ignore this, okay? And then just copy and paste a Unicode character down here. We now need to initialize our values. So I'm going to type initialize values and notice that there's a hashtag in front of it. This will comment it out. So our initial value for X is this, okay? Copy that into your own IDE. Our initial value for Y is zero, and our initial value for phi, which we need to go on the uh, Google and grab phi symbol. Our initial value for phi is gonna be theta, so I'm just gonna copy that in there. Now I'm going to add a number of variables here. So this first one, N, is gonna be the number of iterations that we're on. Um, I'm going to also add change, uh, which is going to tell us how much our variable is changing each time so that we know when to quit. And I'm also going to add one that's called max iterations. And that's going to cap our number of iterations so that if, for whatever reason, our program doesn't work, it doesn't just keep looping and looping and looping and then eventually crash the website. Our next step is to create the loop. So I'm going to type while n, equal, while n is less than max iterations, so we want the number of iterations that we're on to be always less than the maximum number of iterations we're allowed. And we want the change to be greater than zero. Change is gonna tell us whether our variables are changing or not. If change is equal to zero, then we know it's not changing and we want to stop the looping because there's no point in looping anymore. Now we haven't actually defined our D variable yet. We're gonna do it in this loop. So the D variable is equal to the sign of phi as we said in the previous section but this actually isn't a function in python instead of doing sine we're going to do phi over the absolute value of phi and that should just give us the sine of phi now we're going to type in our iteration formula so if you remember from before the next x value is equal to the current x value minus d times y times 2 to the power of minus n, okay? Uh, now, I've put brackets around here just to make sure that there are no errors uh, in bod mass. Sometimes Python doesn't work well with bod mass. But this 2 to the power of minus n doesn't actually work like this in Python. You have to use a comma in between, and then you have to put math.pow, okay? This is a library that we haven't imported yet. So to import the library, we're going to have to add a little space up at the top and import the math library. That should just import this so that math.pow now works and it gives, up, gives us an outcome. The next one is phi, and so this formula was phi next equals phi minus d multiplied by the inverse tan, or it's called math.a tan, of math.pow to to the minus n. Now that we have our next x, y, and phi variables stored in these new variables called x next, y next, and phi next, we can calculate the change. So the change is going to be our total change in x plus our total change in y. So to get the change, we're going to need to get the absolute value of x underscore next minus x and then y next minus y. So that's just going to get the difference between x and y and add them together. So when this change equals zero, we know that we don't need to iterate anymore. Now that we've found the change, we can actually copy our next values to our original variables. So we're going to set x equal to x underscore next. We're going to set y equal to y next. And we're going to set phi equal to phi next. The last step is we want n to add 1 each time. So to do that, we're just going to say n equals n plus 1. And then each time it loops round, it'll add 1 to n. So n will be our number of iterations. 
Now our final step is to output these values to the console. So we don't want this within the while function, otherwise it will just keep outputting again and again and again each iteration. We only want it to do this at the very end. So we're going to unindent this so that it's outside of the while. This is what the output string looks like. Remember that when we concatenate, meaning we join together the strings, we have to make sure that this is in string format. So we put the string function around it. And um, also that tan theta can be simply found by dividing sine theta by cosine theta, or in this case, y divided by x. Now I've, got, I've put the iterations here as well. So this n value will tell us the number of iterations we've had for this to calculate the values. So now that we've defined the function, the function has been created. So we just need to call it by typing in trig or whatever you called your original function and then typing in the value that you want it to work with. So we wanted to find sine one. Um, so we'll type in our one and then click run. If you typed in the curly brackets like I did, don't be an idiot, just type in colons. <laughs> Click run and you should get sine 1, cosine 1 and tan 1. If your code doesn't work, then I've left this uh, code into the comment section so you can just copy and paste it and find out what's going wrong with your code. Hopefully it helped, uh, hopefully you understand something new and peace.